Reds looking for their 62nd win of the year. Inch a little bit closer to this Cardinal club for second place. Meanwhile, Mike Leak will fake this lineup put out there by the manager of the Cardinals, Mike Matheny, today. Matt Carpenter, John Jay, and Alan Craig at the top. Middle three include Matt Holliday, David Freeze, and Matt Adams getting the start at first base. Bottom three, Tony Cruz catches Daniel Descalzo at short. Lance Lynn, the pitcher. Carlos Beltran out of the Cardinal lineup this afternoon, and that group will face this man, Mike Leak. Now Mike Leak's on a roll. He's one of these guys that throws four major league pitches, if not five pitches, if you want to include a cutter in that. But he mixes them all up very well. He throws his fastball, true fastball, about 89 miles an hour, only throws it about 43 percent of the time. He throws a cutter, which will go into left-handers. That's a good pitch for him. A slider that he likes to drop down and in on the left-hander's back foot. A curveball, which has been very good, and a changeup for him. A fewer curves this year for Mike Lee, more sliders overall, and it's really paid off for him. Take a look at the Reds defensively behind Mike Leak. They have not committed an error yet in this series. Brought to you by your Ford dealers. Xavier Paul gets to start in left this afternoon. Chew in center, Bruce and right. In the infield, third to first is Frazier, Cozart, Phillips, and Votto. Devin Mezzarocco catches the day game after the night game. Mike Leak makes his 22nd start of the year. And for Leak, this is start number two against the Cardinals this year. He worked against them back on the 7th of June. Suffered the loss in that game, 9-2. Here he goes with his red uniform top on, trying to get the Reds the victory today. Matt Carpenter steps in to lead it off. First pitch right in there for a called strike, and we are underway. Game time temperature here at the ballpark. An extremely comfortable 75 degrees. Carpenter is in the thralls of a hitting slump as is Todd Frazier of the Reds will lift this fly ball in the center. It's caught out there by Chu and so Carpenter is now 0 for 9 in this series and 0 for his last 21 and a good start for Leak and company. You know as you look at the delivery of Mike Leak one thing you notice from the full lineup that you like his pace he's very quick between pitches he's ready to go as soon as the hitters in there but the other thing is you watch him tap his glove on his thigh that kind of sets his pace of the delivery it's a quick delivery and that way it kind of keeps him going to the plate rather than trying to lull himself to sleep with a real slow delivery and then all of a sudden try to throw hard to the plate that's in slow motion right there but that little glove tap kind of gets him going. He gets John Jay with one out. And I've always thought that pitching is kind of like a dance step, that you have a certain tempo that you have to stay with. And everybody has a different tempo. Some guys would rather go slow, others would rather go a little bit quicker. Leak, Leak's got a nice quick pace. Jay lifts this ball in the left center. Chu on the run. Chu will get there. Paul cuts in front of Chu. Red center fielder moving to his right. Corrals that ball, so he has two put outs here in the first inning. Two fly ball outs, and that's what you see a lot of from Leak, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is, and but he's also a guy that'll get you some ground balls. This is a good play because you have two outfielders that have not played a whole bunch with each other recently. And you know, it seems like every other day that Chu is playing with a different left fielder. So sometimes miscommunication can happen when that is the case. Two out, nobody on. The Cardinals have scored in the first inning in the first two games of this series. So Leak tries to hang a zero on the board here in the first inning today. Well, he had two starts, did Mike Leak, as Alan Craig bats with two men out. Two starts on the road trip in San Francisco when he picked up the win in an 8 3 victory over the Giants. And then that game in San Diego where the Reds lost two to one he was the victim of the blown save he just threw tremendous ball out there well he did the Giants were scuffling at the time but in San Diego you know that was a team that felt like they could compete with the Reds pretty well and he was pitching in his hometown so he had a little extra pressure on him there to try to perform in front of all his friends and family grew up in a neighborhood and in, in San Diego and boy seven innings of shutout baseball for league that was outstanding. He comes in with the sixth best ERA in the National League at 2.59. Now gets a strike in there to Craig after falling behind 3 0. And victory against the Giants is 10th of the year. Marks the second time in this, the fourth year of his career, in which he has won in double figures. He won a dozen games two years ago. 
That ball dropped in front of Jay Bruce, so a two out single for Alan Craig is his fourth hit of this series. A uh, big, strong guy like Alan Craig, you're playing him deep, so he's likely to get more of these than other hitters are. He just hits it no man's land. Sometimes you make a good pitch, you get a bad result. That's what happens here for Leak. Joey Votto will hold Craig over at first. That's Chris Maloney, the Cardinal first base coach, as Mike Leak works from the stretch now for the first time this afternoon. Home plate umpire is Dan Bellino. Bruce Dreckman is at first. The crew chief is Tim Welke. He's out at second. Will Little is over at third. Matt Holiday doing a little landscape cleanup work around the home plate area. Their cleanup hitter starts the game at 275. 13 homers. He's driven in 52. A hit and three walks in this series. The main cardinal, I guess he and David Freeze, that have done the most damage against Mike Lee. Holiday, seven of 17 lifetime against Lee. I mentioned earlier for Mike Lee, though, a 100th start of his Reds career. That's a pretty. <laughs> that's a pretty amazing stack, considering that Mike Lee is 25 years old. By Holiday to left center field that will bounce and go to the wall. Here comes the runner Craig being waved around third. Holiday in the second, standing with an RBI double, and the Cardinals with two out, nobody on, produce a hit to right by Craig, a double to the wall to left center by Holiday. They take the lead for the third consecutive game in the first inning. Well, with a double, an RBI double is what it did it last night when Beltron. Hit one in, into the gap and drove a run in with nobody out. And this time with two out, they take advantage of a little blue base hit by Alan Craig. Matt Holiday reaches out and finds a gap in left center field. Tell you what, there it is again. Cardinals, runners in scoring position, what their batting average is. I mean, they are rewriting team history in that particular department. Yesterday, they went one for nine. Which is a real rarity for them after going five for eight in the series on Friday. They started this series with that incredible number with runners in scoring position at 335. Well, the eight was actually a first base. I, I, I see that now, but you know what? With Holiday up there hitting a double, that might as well be in scoring position. Now a ball on the strike to David Freeze. Well, they have, when you look at the top ten and Runners in scoring position, batting average. They have five of the top ten yeah. in that list. Well, it just seems like their attitude changes a little bit with runners on base. Freeze uses the other alley, right center field. Chu gets over there, knocks it down. Run will score. Freeze in the second with a slide, and it's two to nothing, Cardinals. Three straight hits after the first two are retired. Well, the little blue pit by Craig, but then two solidly hit balls by Holiday. This one by David Freeze. Boy, he loves to use that right center field. And he goes the other way right there. He's going to find a spot where the ball's going to fall in. That's going to score the runner with two outs no matter what. But he goes to second base on somewhat of a misplay out there by Chu. So they now again have another runner in scoring position. Here's Matt Adams getting the start at first base today with Carlos Beltran out of the lineup. Big strong guy, Matt Adams hitting 284. Seven home runs. He's driven in 30. Makes his first start of the series. He came into the game as did everybody off the Cardinal bench on Friday night. Played some first base. Up there twice, struck out both times. Adams has hurt the Reds earlier this year with a pair of home runs, five RBIs, but this road trip has not been kind to him. 
Adams one for 15 as the Cardinals wrap up this 11 game road trip here today. Where they were swept in Atlanta they went one and four. In Pittsburgh Adams puts a good stroke on this ball to right. Bruce going back and he is not going to get it. Two run homer Matt Adams. Four nothing Cardinals. Well I was about to say despite the fact that he has not had a good road trip he still has seven home runs. And 30 RBI but check that now eight home runs and 32 as the Cardinals have put a number on the board here with two out in the first inning against Mike Leake. Now they just missed the spot right there. I mean that ball is up and out over the plate and Adams with plenty of plate coverage. Third time this year he's gone deep against the Reds and unfortunately as you say all this coming with two men out. And nobody on. Here's Tony Cruz, the catcher. Leak gives up his 15th home run ball. Frazier. Throws out Cruz to retire the side, but damage done. Major. Four across for the Cardinals in the first. This thing as they'll come up here in the bottom of the first inning against St. Louis pitching. Here's Dusty's lineup today. Chu, Paul, and Votto at the top. Phillips, Bruce, Frazier in the middle. Kozak, Mezzarocco, and Leak make up the bottom third against this 26 year old. Another former first round pick. Leak on the red side. Lance Lynn. On the Cardinal side. Well, you know, there's an old saying that says a double play is the pitcher's best friend, but I think Lance Lynn would beg to, beg to differ today. He'd say, How about a four spot in the first inning when I take the mound? That would be my best friend. And he runs a 12 and 5 record out there. He's a guy that can get wild from time to time. You see the number of walks he has, but he also has 130 strikeouts or thereabouts. So he's got a fastball that is very quick in the mid to upper 90s sometimes. And the young man that is off to a tremendous start in his major league career. He gets Chu to get it going here in the bottom of the first. Chu at 283 with 15 homers. He's driven in 35. There's that uh, those numbers that Chris is talking about, the run support over the last two years for Lance Lynn. You know, we but we've always said that. You know the winds and the winds are the one thing that a starting pitcher really can't control because you never know what your offense is going to do behind you. You never really know what your defense is going to do and so on. All you can do is keep your team in the game. That's why earned run average is a good way of taking a look at what a pitcher does. Then gets the strike out of two to start the bottom of the first. Take a look at the Cardinals defensively behind. The 26 year old right hander Lance Lynn brought to you by your four dealers. Holiday Jay and Craig Alan Craig getting the start in right field today. Freeze Descalzo Carpenter and Adams on the infield. Lynn throws to Tony Cruz. As the catcher for the Cardinals this afternoon. Here's Xavier Paul. Paul has really had a tough go of it at the plate as of late. Starts this game at 239 with six home runs. 28 runs batted in. He's had one appearance. That was as a pinch hitter in this series thus far that came in the eighth inning last night. The last two months, he has really labored trying to be effective at the plate. 214 in June, under 200 in July. Uh, Dusty getting away from his normal philosophy of loading up left handers in a row or same type of hitters in a row. He likes to go lefty righty lefty righty but quite frankly you look down the rest of the lineup and who's better suited to hit second in this lineup today. You've got several guys that are struggling so Dusty will get away from that lefty righty and go three lefties in a row with Chu Paul and Votto. He really has gotten away. Really right before the all star break I guess gotten away from using Kozart in the two spot. Well, you're forced to I mean he wasn't delivering in the two spot. Maybe he felt a little extra pressure by being at the top of the lineup want to relieve some pressure put him down lower. Hit hard by Paul but right back to the mound with a big six foot five Lance Lynn corrals it for out number two. Thank you. 
guys. Sometimes you got to charge them. Or maybe not. That ball right back. If Essentially in the glove where he holds it there. He finishes up with his glove about waist high and it comes right back at the belt. 6 5 2 40 with quick reaction. So two out for Joey Votto. We talked so much about the fact that Votto leads the league and has in the past years in on base percentage. He comes into this game at 439. But what he has done here as of late. A little bit mind boggling. Been on base 10 of his last 11 plate appearances, 14 of his last 19, and that is upwards of 730 on base percentage. Comes in fourth in the league and hitting at 321. And that three run homer here on Friday night. Will as always keep our eye on those other games of interest. The Pirates are at home against Colorado. They'll start in about 10 minutes. Strike three to Joey Votto. And the Reds go in order in the bottom of the first. Cardinals get four in the first with two men out, nobody on. Lead four nothing after one. Mike Leak now back to work. He'll face the number eight hitter, Daniel Descalzo, playing shortstop for the second time in three days. Yesterday, one for three. Ball going back, ball going back, and he got oh. it. One of those slicers looked like that was coming back to him at the bitter end. How about Xavier Paul? Kind of reaches his glove almost behind him on this. I mean, the way he went back on that, he didn't give a lot of people confidence he was going to be able to grab it, but he stays right with it. Good hand eye coordination there, and the Reds left field are able to take away an extra base hit. Nice play. Three of the four outs now that Leak has. Recorded in this game have been via the fly ball. He gets the leadoff man and now deals with a pitcher, Lance Lynn. Four hits to his credit this year. Yeah, that is really an indicator because Mike Leak is a guy that normally gets about 62% ground balls over fly balls. Another ball in the air. Bruce will make the catch. Two up. You know, we were talking last night about Tony Singrani. He's a guy that pitches up in the strike zone. He's going to get a lot of fly balls because of that. Mike Leak, rather than trying to find that spot in the very top of the strike zone, he's got to find that spot at the very lower end of the strike zone and keep the majority of his pitches down there, right down there at the hollow of the knees. When he starts getting that ball even two, three, four inches up above that, that's when you start seeing balls in the air and balls leaving the ballpark. So really what we're seeing out of Leak more so this year than ever before is the ability and the consistency to do that. Well, you're right. I mean, when he starts painting the lower part of the strike zone, you're going to see a lot of easy innings out of Mike Leake. When he starts getting up a little bit, that's when he starts giving up doubles and homers. He's given up now 15 home runs already, not already, but this year. Well, after an ERA of over four in the month of April, he had a sub two in May, a sub two ERA in June. And a sub three at two eight in the month of July. And really he's made it look easy doing so. I mean, you could almost call Mike Lee kind of a boring pitcher. He doesn't have a lot of flash to him. He doesn't strike out a lot of hitters. He doesn't have a trick pitch. He doesn't throw sidearm like Bronson Arroyo. He just kind of goes out there and gets you to just miss the ball, ground out, take an easy 0 for four. Just misses ringing up Carpenter there, two and two. You're not kidding. Carpenter fly to center to get this game started. And he'll tap that ball foul. Those numbers we're talking about with an under three ERA in three consecutive months with 30 innings or more pitched. In the last 20 years, Leak is one of only three pitchers for the Reds that have been able to accomplish that. The other two are also on this staff and Bronson Arroyo and Johnny Cueto. 
Bringing the inside corner there as Leak to retire the side. Then a native of Indianapolis, Indiana, although he went to the University of Mississippi. Went to high school in Brownsburg, Indiana, Brownsburg High. Well, that was some kind of a team they had at Brownsburg. When he was a senior, they won the state 4A championship. They went 33 and 0. And of course, one of his teammates was Drew Storen, Washington Nationals pitcher. He was drafted out of high school, decided not to sign, ended up going down to University of Mississippi, where he ended up getting drafted by the Cardinals as a supplemental pick in the first round. Off the end of the bat of Phillips, and he will be thrown out by Carpenter for out number one. You mentioned Drew Storen's name. It just shocked me a couple of weeks ago when I read that he had been uh, sent down to yeah. a triple A. Well, he had had such a great run of it with the Nationals for a couple of years, but uh, you know he had that bone spur in his elbow what last year, and he's never seemed to have totally gotten it back together yet. Yeah, that's been really the story of the Nationals. You know, it seems like they've had a little mix and injuries to certain players here and there that have cost some time. Jason Worth, I understand, has been recently injured again, and it's uh, been a tough story for them, especially for Drew Storen. Nationals expected to be the team to beat in the National League this year, not just the NL East, but the National League. They start the action today at two games under 500 and an incredible 11 and a half games behind Atlanta. To his left, Carpenter, but nobody to throw the ball to. Lynn didn't get over there. They apparently thought that was going to get on into right field for a hit. Well, you know what? You know what they say every time you think you hurt the team. Just get on over there. If you see a ball on the right side of the infield, you're taught over and over and over again. Just get over there. Normally, it's a catcher that's yelling at you. Now here, Matt Carpenter makes a great play. He's coming up ready to throw the ball, and he makes that great play for naught. So Jay Bruce picks up the base hit. Yeah, he hesitated one count, two counts, then took off, but too late as Bruce gets the first Reds base hit. He becomes the first Reds base runner. He's on with one out here in the second. And really, one count of hesitation is all you need, and it's too late. So maybe the Reds can take advantage right here, get an extra out of the inning. Wouldn't Todd Frazier love to be the guy? Break out of it right here. Well, it's really not all that bad of a matchup, really, for Todd Frazier and Lance Lynn. I mean, Frazier is a fastball hitter, not hitting well right now, obviously, but I mean, he's a. A good swing away from turning this thing around and launch one out of here. Dusty Baker the last couple of days has done a lot of talking about. What to do with slumps. Foul ball with a runner going in terms of how you approach it on a day in day out basis. He talked about. Going back looking at video finding out when you were going well and what you were doing. Right then versus what you are what you are doing right now and he also talked about the ability to put the day before behind you. That's, Forget probably, about it. that's probably the biggest thing right there. It becomes a mental thing where the slump gets bigger than maybe your mechanical problem or anything else that's bothering you at the batter's box. You, you foul off a pitch like that and you go uh oh here we go again. See that's a swing right there of just no confidence at all. I mean. Actually, he's fortunate that he did not make contact with that pitch because if he had, chances are he rolls it over into a double play ball. No bat speed. Let it rip. Right or wrong, you got to let it rip. He's 0 for his last 25, and his average has dipped down below 240 now at 237. He did play yesterday, although he did not start in the game, and turned out the fellow that played in place of him, Jack Hanahan, had that big. Two run single in the first inning. Bruce being held over there at first by Adams. And now Lynn steps off. Lynn has not had a lot of success on the road. Eight and one with a 2.66 at home, but his split away from home, a 5.20. ERA. Six of the seven home runs he's given up have been on the road. Now last year he won 18 ball games. That was fourth best in the National League. This year 
with 12 wins. He's second best on the Cardinals. He trails Wainwright. He's one ahead of his teammate Shelby Miller, who pitched the other night. Strike out on a breaking ball of Todd Frazier is out number two. Then is tied with Lariano of the Pirates, Corbin of the Diamondbacks for second in victories in the NL. Yeah, look at the, the spray chart as to where they're pitching Todd Frazier, and they're simply just trying to tease him down and away. And he gets him to chase a ball in the dirt right there. That's the one thing you do in a slump is that you start expanding the strike zone and you get so anxious up there that you, you swing at pitches that you would know you have no way of hitting. Here now is Kozar with a runner aboard and two out. Reds down four nothing in the bottom of the second. Talked about Lance Lynn not being overly successful on the road this year in this ballpark. He's appearing for the fifth time total, third time as a starter, and his ERA is a whopping eight plus. Last time the Reds faced him was here, and they were able to get to him. That was back in uh, early June. So hopefully that's an omen of things to come this afternoon. Goes out at 240 with eight home runs. About the uh, games we're following closely. Pittsburgh at home against Colorado. That game just now underway. Right hander Juan Nicasio pitching for the Rockies. A.J. Burnett. Very fine year he's having this year on the mound for Pittsburgh. And then the Diamondbacks at Boston underway. Brendan McCarthy for the D backs against Philip Dubron of Boston. High and deep by Cozart. Deficit cut in half. Zach hasn't had a lot to shout about in this series so far, but he gets a hanging slider right there. Kind of stays right middle in, about thigh high, and he hits it into the second deck right above the Cozart side. So he takes that four run deficit and cuts it in half with that two run blast. Ninth of the year for Zach Cozart. The Reds, who scored a boatload of their runs yesterday with two men out. Their first five, in fact, came with two men out. Get two here with two men out. Well, that's one of those no doubters right there. I mean, he's talking to Dusty Baker, overheard by Chu. You see the smiles down there, and let's get a little quick score right there. Puts a little enthusiasm and some energy into this crowd. Big crowd here on hand today. I mean, I'm not so sure that there's a seat left. There's some standing room seats, maybe. Although I see him stacked up four or five deep down each of the lines. Mazzarocco is first multi home run game of his career yesterday at that two run shot in the fourth inning against Westbrook. And then the solo in the eighth inning that came against Keith Butler. Pardon me against uh, Michael Blazing. So for Mazzarocco, eight homers this year, 32 batted in. He sees Lynn for the first time ever. Mazzarocco has really been able to take advantage since Hannigan went on the disabled list on the 11th of July. In 15 starts, he's hit over 300, on base percentage over 325, with a dozen RBIs. And he scorches that ball, but a hit taken away by David Freeze down at third. But the deficit cut in half on this blast by Zach Cozart here in the bottom of the second. For serious injuries, call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Take a look at this home road split now. 
That is what the Reds are going to do in August and September. They've got more home games, as you see, 31 home games in August and September versus 22 on the road. And then they've got four against the Cardinals at home, three on the road against the Pirates. They are split three and three. So the Reds have done better at home. So that schedule, you would think by looking at it, would be advantageous to Dusty's crew. And they come in at home at 33 and 18, one of the best home records in the National League and in all of baseball. In fact, in the National League, they trail but two teams, Pittsburgh and Atlanta, for a number of home wins. Trailed 4 0 early, trail 4 2 now as the Cardinals come calling here in the third. John Jay to lead it off. Day batting second today with Beltron out of the lineup. We've seen him hit down in the order on Friday. Number one yesterday, number two today as he lines this ball out into right. Bruce does a good job of cutting it off. Jay held to a leadoff single. Well, the curveball for Mike Leak is not having a lot of snap in it. That's one that gets ripped into right field. Matt Holliday had one early on. It was a curveball. And that's a pitch that's been very important to Mike Leak. That and that slider. I mean, after giving up only four hits in the entire game, seven innings worth against the Padres last time out, he's already given up five hits in this ball game. Here we are, nobody out in the third. So you have days like this, you've got to just stick with it. Alan Craig, the batter, he took that ball low and outside his first time and dumped it on into right. He then scored on the Matt Holiday double. Craig comes in now with 131 hits. He and Joey Votto came in tied for second in the league in base hits behind Milwaukee's Gene Segura with 133. Lee gets ahead two strikes. On that El Canel graphic, where these two teams have two series remaining one here, one in St. Louis at the end of August 26, 27, 28. Reds will be in St. Louis for a three game series, and then the following Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, September 2, 3, 4, Cardinals will be back here and the fifth. That's a four gamer, so the second through the fifth of September will mark the last time during the regular season that the Cardinals are in. Remember, Wade. Things are set up right now, and certainly there's a lot of time for it to change. But if everything stayed the way it is, these two teams would conceivably meet in the National League Wild Card playoff game. Cardinals were in that game last year, defeated Atlanta. Ozark to the hole, gets it. Phillips out on Devoto, out. Double play. Combination there. Craig does it run overly well, and Kozar did a great job of getting that ball and getting rid of it. Uh, that's a little bit more like it, Mike Leake says. I get the ball on the ground, I depend on some of the best glovesmen around to do the job, and that is a dandy double play. I'll tell you what, Brandon Phillips stays right in there, and he knows that John Jay is coming in, coming in hard, but he also knows that Leake needs every how he can get. And he stays in there and gets a tough turn, and that's some pretty good defense. The Cardinals are prone to hit into the double play. They lead the National League in that department. Reds yeah. did a nice job right there turning it. They also don't have very many strikeouts on their team. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've got anybody over 80 strikeouts. If they do, it's right at 80. Whereas the Reds have four players with more than 90. So they got more opportunities to grind into those double plays. Two takes care of that ball hit by Holiday, so three batters and out thanks to the double play ball. Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, and then in a real rarity, another open date on Thursday before they begin a three game weekend series here against the San Diego Padres. So it's an eight game, 10 day homestand that started on Friday night with these Cardinals. Mike Leak leads it off.
think in that Giants game two starts ago had a three hit game he had really been uh, absent from the hit column until that three hit game then in another hit an infield hit in his start out in San Diego so he comes in with nine hits and a 188 average into this game. It's amazing where you raise the level of the bar of expectation yeah. on a hitter, especially a pitcher. I mean, normally a guy comes in, he's hitting 188, you're thinking that's not bad for a pitcher. But for Mike Leake, you're thinking he ought to be hitting more at least like 250. Because he's shown us over the years he's that good of a hitter. He's a career 255 hitter. And that's with the numbers this year. So he started the year upwards of 260, 265. Strikes out for the first out here in the bottom of the third. Let's go now to Los Angeles for a Fox Sports One game break. Those Pirates start today 22 games above the 500 mark leaders in the National League Central lost the game on Friday at home against Colorado bounced back with a win yesterday and that Andrew McCutcheon hit has put them in front here in the first inning this afternoon out at PNC Park. Two struck out to get the Reds first inning started. that home run yesterday in the eighth inning a two run homer significant in the fact that it was the first home run this year of the 15 that Chu has hit that was a non solo home run. He put a big time charge into that ball it off of Michael Blazik. Capped a three run eight. Final run the Reds scored in an eight three win. Well, he hadn't homered here since the end of May, so a little over two months. Good to see him strike last night. So he had 16 home runs a year ago, so now he's just one shy of that for this year. Jammed a little bit on that pitch, and he is retired on the fly ball in the center by John Jay. You know, it looks like the ball is carrying pretty well today. A little bit of a breeze blowing from out of the west down the river that takes those balls in the gaps a little bit. There's not a lot of moving by the flags, but the ball that Cozart hit needed no help. That was out of here. The one that Matt Adams hit needed no help. This one really did not get at all, but it still went fairly deep center field. So here now is Xavier Paul. He scalded that ball right back to the pitcher Lance Lynn. In the first inning the Reds have had two line drives like that. That one to Lynn by Paul and then the one off the bat of Mezzarocco to end the second. Two, three first, trying to do the same here in the third. He like Mike Lee coming off back to back solid performances. With a win two starts ago at home against Philadelphia and a very good outing against Pittsburgh during uh, this road trip his last time out. Total in those games of two runs over 13 innings. Five 
Lotto waits on deck. Three and two. A leak strikeout, a chew fly out. And now a 3 2 offering to Paul. Maybe trouble. Here comes Holiday. He'll get there. Paul retired. Reds go in order in the bottom of the third and trail 4 2 through three. Who are the players involved in the last trade made between the Reds and the Cardinals? Players involved in the last trade between these two teams. Leak to freeze to start the fourth inning. I would say we have to go back more than a decade, I would think. You're mulling it? Maybe even closer to two. Did it involve a, a pitcher? And maybe a first baseman? Chris has it. Well, I don't know about that, but I at least have the positions to work with. Mm -hmm. and back if I'm not mistaken, I think there was Walt Jockety, who was the general manager of the Cardinals at that time, who pulled the trigger on that deal. You're really narrowing in on it. Jim Bode would have been the general manager of the Reds. Giving us all the details except the names. Wow. You don't want to do that. Those are all hints. Mm -hmm. Freeze doubled in a run his first time. Lee gets him on an off speed pitch here to start the fourth with a strikeout. Uh, good looking breaking ball right there for Mike Lee. That curveball has kind of eluded him early in the ball game. He's been hanging it up there, but he finishes that one, even though it kind of backs up on him a little bit and he gets a strikeout. So here's Matt Adams. His home run ball now. The difference in this game that two run homer in the first inning out into the sun deck and right. That is a big burly dude here. You're talking 6'3, 260. The beard, you may want to nickname him Grizzly. You could. Probably been used and reused again, but I know a good line when I steal one. You could say the same thing about Ryan Ludwig. You could say the same thing about JJ uh, Hoover. Well, except Grizzly would fit with the last name Adams. True. But they're burly looking fellas. Grizzly Ludwig. That's got a nice ring to it, too. You can't tell me he doesn't look grizzly. <laughs> Two out. Ludwig, by the way, not playing today for Louisville. He's scheduled to be off today. Jonathan Broxton is starting that game in Indianapolis. For the Louisville team, and when he finishes, we'll pass along his line. These games are probably going to go about one inning today. To start inning, so. yeah. that Jim Day, in fact, is following that closely, and we'll report on that when it is completed. Here's Tony Cruz with two out. So after the four run first, the Cardinals go down in order in the second. Three batters and out in the third, thanks to the double play ball hit into by Craig. First two out here in the fourth. Mike Leak falls behind the light hitting catcher of the Cardinals 3 0. And he 
walks him on four. That's the first walk given up by Mike Lee. Bring Daniel Descalzo to the plate. Cardinals wrapping up, as I mentioned earlier, an 11 game road trip today. It included that doubleheader in Pittsburgh on Tuesday. They have the Dodgers coming to town for four and then the Cubs. So a week long homestand, then an off day, and then Pittsburgh in for three. So nice long homestand for them. That includes the hottest team in baseball, the Dodgers. In the left, and Paul will handle it. And a relatively easy inning for Mike Lee here in the top of the fourth. Across the river, you can get just about any type of getta you so desire, including, yes, a getta corn dog. You'd like to be over there at the getta fest today, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I would. I really would. I didn't realize there were so many different varieties of getta. Go over there and get your getta all day today. What's your favorite kind of getta? Vegetarian. They had a Which isn't really getta, but I mean, right. they, they, right. they make it look like getta. They had a get a burrito sign there. I saw that. Get a corn dog. What if they'll still be operating at the end of this ball game? We could take a hike over there and get some getta. And he's serving up some getta here in the cafeteria. Hard to center by Votto. Jay chasing on the track. Reaches up and makes the catch. Votto scalded that ball, but Jay tracked it down. Half step in front of the wall, straightaway center field. Yeah, the ball is definitely carrying a little bit. Joey Votto gets not a whole lot of this one. He gets enough to put a scare into the center fielder out there. As John Jay is a pretty good outfielder, he goes back in an unfamiliar territory and catches it about a step away from the wall. So still another hard hit ball by the Reds. Paul, Mezzarocco, now Votto. And it turned into outs. Here's Brandon Phillips. I'd like to get this guy's bat going again. Brandon in the series is three for nine. Talked yesterday about the fact that his average, batting average wise, has been down since he was hit on the first day of June by that pitch in Pittsburgh. He hit 209 in June, 240 in the month of July. Starts this game at 263 overall. Rounded out to the second baseman, Carpenter is first time. In the hole, Descalzo to get it. Strong throw across to retire Phillips, two out. Batter will be Jay Bruce. And yeah, we said that Lance Lynn, an 18 game winner last year, and even after winning 18 games, the Cardinals told him at the end of the season, you know, we don't like the way you look. We want you to come back to spring training this year lighter. He lost 40 pounds between the end of last year. And the beginning of spring training this year, 40 pounds. I mean, they've got him listed right now at six feet five inches tall, 250. And he's every bit of that, but I mean, he was bigger and rounder last season. And when you saw him in early April this year, that first series in St. Louis, you're pointing to this fellow out there and said, Hey, who's the new guy they picked yeah, up? You're right about that. And what makes him dangerous is that he throws a couple of different kinds of fastballs. He's got that four seamer that he can ride up in the zone. And the last two that you just saw to Jay Bruce are the two seam variety. He runs down and away. Averages about 93 miles an hour on a fastball. Throws a slider and a curveball. And a rare changeup. Not very many of those at all.
Bruce on a 2 2 is a strikeout victim. The fifth of the game for Lance Lynn. It's Ohio. Jim Day with you. Let's give you that update on Jonathan Brox. And he started today's game in Indianapolis for the Louisville Bats. And he had to play some damage control. Gave, out a one, gave up a one out single, then gave up a ground rule double. Got an out on a fielder's choice and then struck out the final batter of the first. So in the end, it was one inning pitch, two hits, no runs. He struck out a batter. He threw 18 pitches, guys. 12 were strikes. The telltale sign will be how he feels tomorrow after back-to-back -back days of pitching. If all goes well, you could see, finally, finally see Jonathan Broxton in a red uniform this coming week. All right, thanks, J.D. Broxton been on the DL since the 15th of June, so he's pushing, what, six and a half weeks or so since we've last seen him in a red uniform. We did see him out here but two days ago throwing uh, a simulated inning. He's out throwing in the outfield, running in the outfield. It'll be good to get the big guy back and on the active roster. Lynn strikes out to start the St. Louis fifth inning, number three for Mike Lee. Dusty Baker alluded to the fact that Pedro Villarreal was here until Broxton came back. Villarreal came up, but yesterday. Here's Matt Carpenter. Light out, struck out, 0 for 2. Carpenter was in the top 10 in the league and hitting when this series began. Started this game at 3 0 3. Lotto handles it. Feeds on the league covering. So Carpenter 0 for 3. Boy, he and Todd Frazier going through a heck of a tough time right now at the plate. Now, meanwhile, Mike Leake is beginning to get it together and become Mike Leake. He's retired six of the last seven. Aside from that walk that he gave Tony Cruz last inning and seems to be now finding the bottom of the strike zone a little bit better. Or is it seven of eight? Now one over the minimum since the second inning started. Yeah. Got the first two in the first inning, gave it up the hit to right to Alan Craig, the RBI double to left center to Holiday, the double to center by Freeze, and then the two run homer to Matt Adams. His eighth of the year, and that blast is the difference right now in this 4 2 game. John Jay singled in the right his last time. He had a six game hitting streak ended yesterday, did Jay, when he went 0 for 3. Now he gets ahead 3 and 0. Four pitch walk to the Cardinal center fielder, the second by Lee. I know you're dying to know, so let's go back to the AT&T trivia question and find out the answer. The last players involved in the trade between the Reds and the Cardinals, and how close was our Chris Welsh? How about the Cowboy Jeff Brantley for Demetri Young, November of '97. Boy, hard at it right there in the radio booth. That's who you had in mind. That was it. Outside ball one to Alan Craig, and now Mezzarocco hand delivers the ball back to Leak. That was just a couple of years, really, after Cowboy won the Rollies Relief Pitcher of the Year award. That was in 1996. He saved 44 games and 49 chances. Of his four seasons with the Reds. You should note that uh, the Cowboy, along with John Franco and Danny Graves and Reggie Sanders and Ken Griffey Jr. and Griffey Jr. are the five modern-day Reds players being uh, looked at for the Reds Hall of Fame ballot. They're on the ballot for 2014 induction. One of that group of five will be inducted. 
next summer. Leak walk J on four. Now it falls behind Craig three and zero. Oh. Craig, 29 years old. Big year last year, 92 runs batted in. He'll surpass that total this year. He's at 84 now. He gets to have his first ever 100 RBI season. Goes out to Phillips. That puts an end to the Cardinal half of number five. St. Louis has left two men on in this game. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, and shows and specials that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, coming August 17th. Lance Lynn back to work. He'll get Frazier, Cozart, Mezzarocco here in the bottom of the fifth. Red scored on the two run homer by Cozart. Who's on deck in the second, cutting their four run deficit in half to four to two? Or they'd like to get this guy going here, sitting on 10 home runs seemingly forever. Todd Frazier with the charge into this ball into right center. Craig on the track will haul it in for the out. Frazier last homer against Mike Kickham of the Giants here on the 1st of July. Prior to that, it had been two weeks. Before that, on the 17th of June, when he homered here against Francisco Lariano. So he's well, a he gets, long drought. He gets a fastball that time and pretty much center the plate a little bit above the knees. And that's usually a pitch that Todd Frazier, when he's going right, is going to center up. He just a hair late on that. So here's Cozart. Cozart's homer, the second of his career against Lance Lynn. Now at 38 runs batted in, surpassing his total of a year ago. Cozart had 15 homers, but only 35 RBIs last year. It's always interesting to see how a pitcher pitches a batter the at bat after he hits a home run. And Cozart looked like he got a slider last time, kind of hung on the inner part of the plate. This time he's had two fastballs away. Got his break last year into the Cardinal rotation due to the injury to Chris Carpenter. And he immediately picked up where Carpenter left off, going 6 0 in his first set of ball games and with a very low earned run average. And the update on Carpenter was that he was coming back from an injury that he thought he would never pitch from again. And unfortunately for Chris Carpenter and the Cardinals right now, he's taking a step back as of. I guess about July the 23rd, he went to his dad in AAA pitching, did not pitch very well, began to feel the same numbness in his hand that he's felt before. So they're not sure if there is a timetable for his return. Right at Descalzo, two out. Cardinals have been hit like most teams in terms of injuries and things that they've had to overcome. Rafael Furcal, their shortstop, underwent Tommy John surgery, and so he was out for the year. That's how they turned to Pete Cosma. Jaime Garcia, he's had shoulder surgery out since the middle of May. They lost their closer in Jason Mott. They've talked about Carpenter. So they, like the Reds, like the Pirates, like mm -hmm. most teams, have had to uh, endure the injuries and make the appropriate changes. To hear Jim Day talk about the outing of Jonathan Broxton. He got through that. Now the big test will be tomorrow and how he feels. 
Maybe we'll see the big man back in uniform. Who knows as early as the Oakland series. Well it's not like there's a real deficiency in the bullpen going on right. so there shouldn't be all that much urgency on the part of the Reds. They should want to make sure that Broxton is ready that his arm feels right that his velocity is back to where it ought to be. And maybe the command would be something that you'd want him to maybe have a couple of more outings down the triple A for. Strike three called to Mezzarocco. Painting the outside corner is Lance Lynn. Take a look at our Honda game summary. Cardinal strike for four in the first inning. RBI double by Matt Holliday. Freeze doubled in a run, and then Matt Adams. Watch the big man. Grizzly Adams, if you will, launch one into the sun deck out and right. And a 4-0 Cardinal lead. Reds bounce back, though. In the bottom of the second, Zach Kozar, his ninth of the year. And it made it a 4-2 game, and that's where we stand now into the sixth. That's our Honda game summary here on this Sunday afternoon. Mike Leach certainly has settled in. Has faced one over the minimum since the first inning. Lance Lynn, he has set down 10 in a row since the Cozart home run in the bottom of the second. And Holiday will lead it off. One for two in this game. He's had a pretty good road trip. Holiday started at 343 on the on the trip entering today's game. Playing deep and straight away. And he'll hit it right back up the middle for a base hit, his second of this game. And he is on to start the Cardinal Six with their sixth hit. That will be David Freeze. Reminder to get ready for Reds action 30 minutes before every game. That's with Reds Live here on Fox Sports Ohio. Fox Sports Ohio, your exclusive home of Reds baseball. Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. No game tomorrow for the Reds, then back in action on Tuesday against the Oakland Athletics. Remember, it was Oakland that uh, took it to the Reds a couple of times out there. That was part of that Arizona, Oakland, Texas road trip. Reds are out there in Oakland on the 25th and 26th of June. Lost 7 to 3. Tommy Malone started that game. He recently was sent down to the minor leagues by Oakland. And then on Wednesday afternoon, the 26th. What a heck of a job turned in by A.J. Griffin going the distance, allowing the Reds just two hits in that one and a 5 0 Oakland win. Josh Donaldson, remember, had a couple of big games for Oakland, homered in each game. Now the A's will be here for two games beginning Tuesday. We don't see either of those same starters. Dan Straley at 6 and 5 will go against Matt Latos Tuesday night. Straley has not pitched. Well, as of late, and in the afternoon game on Wednesday will feature Homer Bailey against Bartolo Colon, 14 game winner at the age of 40. Sharply hit up the middle by Freeze, so back to back hits. Great leak in the Reds here in the Cardinal sixth inning. Yeah, this is the kind of inning that can get away from the Reds very quickly, and that second hit sends Brian Price to the phone pronto. Bring up Porky Lopez down the Reds bullpen and get somebody up and throwing. Freeze boy, he of all the guys in this Cardinal lineup, he keeps his hands inside the ball about as well as anybody. He rarely pulls the ball. Sometimes he gets out in front of a breaking ball. For the most part, though, he likes that right center field and up the middle strategy. And now Price will join Mezzarocco on the mound and. Talk about Matt Adams. Also talk about what Mike Leak needs to do right here to keep this ball in the ballpark. Logan Andrusik now up in the Reds bullpen. Here comes Dan Bellino to break things up. Now when Mezzarocco goes back behind the home plate, he and Matt Adams have something to talk about. They're both from Central Pennsylvania. All right, Adams from. Phillipsburg, I believe. He went to Slippery Rock College where he set an all time batting average record there at 473 before the Cardinals picked him in the 23rd round. 
made the ball club as a extra player this year and he's been awfully good for him. Holiday was on the DL. The Cardinals moved Craig out to left, and it was Adams who started for almost two straight weeks over there at first base. And he's hit at every minor league stop. He sure has got the body of a slugger. Another screamer into right field by Adams, his second hit of the afternoon. Bruce bobbles the ball, and now the runner coming home, and it's 5 to 2, St. Louis. That would have loaded the bases. I think Jose Akendo was originally going to stop the lead runner, Matt Holliday. With nobody out, they weren't going to take a chance of being having a runner thrown out at the plate, but when that ball was bobbled out there at right field a little bit, that gave Akendo the chance of. To send Holiday Adams with a ripped line drive in the right field. Boy, Mike Leak just getting the ball up to him. A little stop and go action at third base. The Cardinals use back to back to back hits to increase their advantage again to three at five to two. And they're wasting about as much time as they can, and here comes Dusty up the dugout steps. That will indeed be a hit. An error by Bruce. No RBI for Adams. A 5-2 Cardinal lead. And as per mentioned by Chris, here's Dusty. Well, all three of those balls pretty well hit. And Dusty has seen enough out of Mike Leak. Five innings plus here this afternoon. The Reds do not get a starter that goes through six in this series. Reds make a pitching change. Leak is out of the game. Logan Andrusik, who had to warm up in a hurry, is ready. He will enter. And it is indeed time for our skyline chili call to the bullpen. Hit with runners in scoring position. Three for three today. Six for 17 in the last two days. They also had a very good job of it on Friday. So look at that team average still way up there at 335. Mike Leak today, five innings plus, eight hits allowed, five runs so far, two of the runners on, still his. Walk two, struck out three. Will not be able to pick up victory number 11 today. He's relieved out there by the right hander Logan Andrusik. Yeah, well, Andrusik comes in 33 games for him. You hope that he can dial up that ground ball double play ball and help the Reds get out of this inning. Just to reiterate, Bruce was charged with an error on that bobble out in right field. You saw the replay that. Joe Holiday slowing down as he came to third. It'll stop and start. When the ball was bobbled by Bruce. He came home. Freeze went over to third. First and third. Nobody out. A run in. And a 5 2 Cardinal lead. Bruce are gone for the second time in this series. Yeah, the Reds will play the infield back. They're going to try to get a double play. They will concede the sixth run of the game if Cruz puts it on the ground. Cruz is 0 for 1 with a walk. That's a pretty good number right there. He's ran 11 of the 13 he's inherited. Well, the Reds bullpen has been very good in that department. Another solid base hit in the center. This one by Cruz. And the original four run Cardinal lead. Back intact for St. Louis. They now are up six to two. Yeah, every one of the balls hit by the Cardinals in this inning well struck. Going right back through the boxes, Cruz. You see where Mezzarocco is? He wanted that ball inside. It looked like it caught the more of the middle of the plate. And that ball right by Logan on Drusik before he can react. Run charge to leak. Here's Daniel Descalzo. Weiss is flying to left. Four in the first for the Cardinals, and then Mike Leak really put the clamps on, second through the fifth. 
Yeah, very much like Tony Singrani last night, although Singrani did give up a couple of runs in the second, didn't get touched up as nearly as badly in the first as Leak did. But second game in a row, the Dusty Bakers had to go to the bullpen in the sixth inning. Yeah, as we mentioned, Bronson Arroyo only three and two thirds on Friday. So in all three games of this series, the pen has had to go to work early. Yeah, this is something that they're really not used to because it's uh, one thing that has been pretty much the lifeblood of the Reds all year long has been that starting pitching and how they can give them at least six good solid innings. That's a fair ball by Votto at first base and headed toward the corner. Adams will score. Cruz will go on to third. Descalzo has himself a double. Five straight hits here in the top of the sixth. Three runs thus far and a seven to two St. Louis lead. Uh, more hitting with runners on base. That was not all that bad of a pitch by Logan on Drusic. Looked like a curveball down and away. Descalzo just gets ahead of it and rips it right by Joey Votto. Well, it really all does boil down to hitting with runners in scoring position. I mean, you can almost throw out any other stat. That makes them five for five in that category today. Now the infield in. Second and third, still nobody out. There's not been a National League team. There's not been a National League team that has hit over 300 with runners in scoring position since 2000 when Colorado did it. They hit 309 that year. And the Cardinals are now up over 330. 335 when Mike League left the game, and they've had two hits since then. I mean, that's just. Astounding off the charts. Remember when you played the Cardinals earlier in the year, you said there was no way when the Reds play the Cardinals again in August that that number will be anywhere that high. Right. It's got to come back down to earth, but it has not really for Mike Matheny's crew. He's got a year going where they've been able to pick up some really clutch hits. I see Baker's trying to figure out how his team's going to score five runs off Lance Lynn. That is if Andrusa can hold him from here. Still nobody out, runners to second and third. The mind boggling number of it all is in the Cardinals press notes today. Got a rare defensive hiccup for Todd Frazier. You got the pitcher up you're thinking oh, I'm going to get guaranteed get it out right here and Frazier picks it up and just can't get the handle of it. Second error of the inning by Cincinnati. The error by Bruce was made a moot point due to the hitting by St. Louis. Now this one loads the bases. The definitive number for this Cardinal team and in their press notes today with their 335 average with runners in scoring position at the start of the day they could go hitless. In their next 100 at bats with runners in scoring position and still lead the major leagues in that department. They could go hitless in their next 200 at bats with runners in scoring position and still lead the National League in that department. I'd just like to see him go hitless in their next three at bats. <laughs> it's amazing what they've been able to do in that department. Mind boggling, really. Closest team to them in the National League at the start of this series is Colorado at 263. Closest to them overall in the big leagues is Detroit at 294. Hammered to right field by Carpenter off the top of the fence. So he does break the 0 for 23. Two more runs will score. Cruz and Descalzo touch the plate. Been a five run inning and it's nine to two. Wow. Here comes Dusty Baker. Now the pitch down in the zone and Carpenter gets it and he hits it just as hard as just about everybody else in this inning except 
The pitcher Lance Lynn. That ball nearly goes out of here for a grand slam. Lynn ends up at third. Dusty Baker has seen enough of Logan Andrusik. He makes the call to the bullpen, and Alfredo Simon will enter the game. Simon has worked in each of the first two games of this series, and he'll appear here in the top of the sixth. New pitcher on, third of this inning for the Reds. This is Alfredo Simon. Simon worked an inning on Friday, worked one third of an inning yesterday. Comes in here in the sixth inning. Smash to Phillips, knocks him down, gets back up, throws on the first in time to retire John Jay. The runner stays put at second and third. Where they are teeing off on some balls. That ball just a scorcher, a one hopper right there, Brandon Phillips. I mean, half defense, half protection right there. Alan Craig hit into a double play in the third. He's up there now with second and third and one out. He feel that ball like his feet were cemented to the ground. Now the Cardinals have had some big innings in this series. Four in the first, four in the fourth, three in the fifth on Friday. Four in the first and a five spot here in the sixth inning this afternoon. And a 9 2 lead. Logan Andrusik did not retire a batter of the four he faced, although there was an error by Frazier behind him. Three hits. A couple of runs thus far. Craig, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Phillips going out, and Brandon will make the catch. Lynn, the runner third, going nowhere. So Simon has come on. Retired the first two batters he faces. Tenth man to bat in the inning. They hit around Matt Holliday. They started the inning with a single up the middle. Here he bats again some five runs later. Well, maybe out on the bases standing around. Lance Lynn will get a little worn out. He has set down 10 in a row. Since the home run ball by Cozart back in the second. Well, if standing around is going to wear him out, he needs to change his exercise regimen. Standing around on the bases out in the sun. I'm worn out just watching. I'm doing a little hoping, I guess. I'm with you. Two and one. Kind of like you when you're out there on that golf course, you get worn out. I, get, I do a little hoping out there too. Mm -hmm. You're right. And you got a lot of baseball left. The Reds have four innings. You have to do some offensive work. Every run you keep from scoring is important. You just really never know how the ball game's going to end up. Good job by Simon. Goes out, throws out Holiday, and indeed. Alfredo Simon comes on, retires all three he faces. Big crowd here today, disappointed at what they're seeing for the most part. A lot of red, a lot of Reds fans. I imagine there are some Cardinal fans sprinkled in. 9 2, St. Louis in front. They've about hit the Reds 11 2. Cesar Isturis will bat for Alfredo Simon, so the Reds will have a new pitcher come. The top of the seventh inning. Nice job by Alfredo Simon. One inning, all zeros across. He came in and put out the fire, so to speak. As Chris said, you never know what runs may be the difference. 
Logan Andrusik did not retire a batter, allowed two runs, three hits. Mike Leake gave up seven, all earned, eight hits in five plus innings. So his tourist bats here to start the bottom of the sixth inning against Lance Lynn. It's quickly down two strikes. He's hitting 189 overall with eight RBIs, five out of 16 as a pinch hitter. And he is disposed of as the former Cardinal on three pitches by Lynn out number one. I'll tell you what Lance Lynn has shown himself that pretty good stuff today. All right here's today's IGS bringing the energy feature. Most runs scored as the number one hitter in the lineup in 2013. Jinsu Chu and Starling Marte of the Pirates at the top at 71. No surprise that the National League Central also represented by Matt Carpenter with 63. So all three right out of this division. Isn't that really the number that counts more than anything? Now you don't have a lot of control over whether you score or not as a leadoff hitter. That's why on base percentage is so important when you evaluate that leadoff hitter. But bottom line is scoring the scoring the runs. Mm -hmm. What's well, all about? It's the only one they really keep track of. That's the first one on the scoreboard there. The top three run scorers in the National League are in this game. Matt Carpenter scored 79 times, Joy Votto 76, Shin Su Chu 73. Down further on the list, Matt Holiday at 71. So the top three and four of the top seven are in this game. Chu is 0 for 2. In the series, two hits, nine at bats, including that home run last night. Waves at that one and is a strikeout victim for the second time today. Back to back strikeouts by Lynn, and now eight of them in this game. Yeah, he's just overpowering the Reds right now. He threw fastballs by Asturias. He runs that little two seamer. It looks like a two seamer anyway. It's got the run of one on the outer part of the plate. That's the same pitch that he took care of Chu with in the first inning. So eight strikeouts today. Season high is 10. That was against the Reds back on the 9th of April. In that Cardinal victory, five to one over Dusty's Reds, over at Bush Stadium. And walk anybody today, and that's an oddity for Lynn because he has walked 50 in 135 innings coming into today's game. Little hiccup he had in the second, one out infield hit by Bruce when he didn't fail when he failed to cover first base, and then a two out homer to left by Kozak. Other than that, he's had four one, two, three innings and working on a fifth one here. Yeah, you could argue that that mental breakdown that he had by not covering first base cost him both runs mm -hmm. because Bruce would have been, if he had gotten over there, the second out of the inning. He then struck out Todd Frazier, would have been the third out. Kozart would never have come to the plate, at least not in that inning. But he's had again plenty of runs in his support. It seems like that's the case. When Lance Lynn takes them out over the last few years, it seems like every time he takes them out, the Cardinals are scoring a bundle of runs. He showed you graphic early on about how many runs they've scored for him last year and this year, each year over six runs per game. In fact, if you start in 2012 and you take it right to now, they've had more run support runs for. Lance Lynn than any other pitcher in the National League. So not only is he good, he's pitching on the right day. When you're playing for the team, you pitch for the team that leads the league and runs scored an average, you're probably going to get some of that, right? Full count to Paul.
Pirates have added a run. That game now in Pittsburgh is in the fourth. Pittsburgh two, Colorado nothing. Strike three, call. Paul thought he had walked. Lynn strikes out the side and now has nine of them this afternoon. Head and shoulders now with a hint of old spice. Lance Lynn has had the strikeout pitch working. There's no doubt about that. Nine of them overall. He just got finished striking out the side the sixth inning. And the whiff belongs to Lance Lynn this afternoon. Brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Now with a hint of old spice. As a sad but true line score and totals in this game 9 11 0 St. Louis 2 2 2 for the Cincinnati Reds four in the first five in the sixth inning those big run innings for St. Louis 33 times they've done it this year at least four runs or more that's the most in the National League and they've done it what four times in this series against the Reds meanwhile a new pitcher is on for Cincinnati. Just called up yesterday, Pedro Villarreal. Well, he's been up before. He did not have much of a run of it in the three and two thirds innings that he's pitched. His earned run average is way up there. But I would imagine taking a look at the scoreboard right now, the fact that we're in the seventh inning, they're looking for Pedro to finish this ball game out. Save the Reds' bullpen a little bit, maybe throw some zeros up there, get his confidence back, and just see what happens. Via Real, 25 years old from Edinburgh, Texas. Played collegially at Howard College in Big Spring, Texas. Seventh round pick by the Reds back in 2008. He has been working out of the bullpen as of late down at AAA for Jim Riggleman's team. Started the year as a starter. In fact, made his lone appearance for the Reds this year in a starting role when he filled in for Johnny Cueto. That was on the fifth. Of June against Colorado, it hit around pretty well by that Rockies team. Six runs, ten hits, and three and two thirds inning. His last nine appearances at Louisville have been out of the bullpen. David Freeze, the first man he faces. Last work three days ago through a shutout inning. Freeze, Adams, and Tony Cruz here in the top of the seventh. Carrying pretty well off the bat of Freeze. And a home run. Sixth of the year for Freeze, his first of this series. Boy, he's had a nice so three days against the Reds. Now as a homer and six RBIs in this three-game series. Now all of his hits today as they usually are either up the middle or the right center field. He just has that right field or right center field slot going. This one with a lot of power. Now it's Matt Adams. Hit the ball hard a couple of times including his last time that solid single into right. It was on his ball that Bruce temporarily bobbled the ball that allowed Holiday to score. Adams two out of three this afternoon. He gets it in the air. Should be playable. Chu calls off Kozon and makes the play. Let's go now to Los Angeles for another Fox Sports One game break. 
All right, boy, that Dodger team, unbelievable the way they've been playing. Red saw that close up out there in those four days. And they continue their winning ways in Chicago. That's a ball club that that is, yeah, that's a ball club that's gone really from the laughing stock of the National League, given the fact that the size of their payroll, how underperforming they were, you know, going back to about the midway to late June, to now may be the favorite in all the National League to represent the National League in the postseason. I think it went today 11 games above the 500 mark with their lead continuing to grow seemingly every day over the, the rest of that division currently the second place team is the uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. But when you look back at the Dodger season this is a team that was picked to do so well as you said Chris and yet they were at one point a dozen games under 500 and nine and a half games back. That is of June the 21st. Yeah. They went on a six game winning streak. They're scoring runs now. They've got tremendous starting pitching. They've got a great one two punch with Zach Greinke and, of course, Clayton Kershaw. Kenley Jansen in the closing role has been pretty good. I do like the uh, left hander out of Korea, Hinjin Ryu. Ryu was good. Had a great changeup, and he used it very effectively against the Reds. Who's retired for out number two? Reminder that after the game, Fox Sports Ohio breaks it down for you. The first to get to the manager, Dusty Baker. You'll hear him right here. Reds live post game brought to you by Kings Honda, the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. So after the home run ball, two fly ball outs. This is Daniel Descalzo. He had double his last time for Descalzo, one of the 12 hits the Cardinals have in this game. After giving up the home run ball, Villarreal trying to retire the next three in order. Pitcher spot is next, and yes, Lance Lynn is in the on deck circle. In the air, drifting in the foul ground. Frazier with the glasses down makes the catch. And the inning comes to an end. The Cardinals add another run. Stretch time here in Cincinnati and as always on Sunday afternoons. We'll stay right here for God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you please stand. Kindly remove your hats.
and face the American flag. Major League Baseball, the Cardinals and the Reds salute the men and women of our armed forces as well as those who serve to protect in our local police and fire departments. At this time, please help us honor these brave men and women and all our veterans of service and welcome the Cincinnati Pops Brass Quintet as they perform God Bless America. Check out their full line of fuel efficient vehicles. Lance Lynn back to the mound. Bottom of the seventh inning. He has set down 13 Reds in a row since Kozart's home run in the bottom of the second. He gets Votto to lead it off. So he is struck out, lined out. Remember, he had that stretch of 38 consecutive games in which he reached base, ended on the recent road trip. He's come back since then. Reach base in six in a row. And he'll make it seven here as he singles the other way to the right of the shortstop to Scalzo. So there goes the streak of 13 in a row. Well, it didn't take too long. Only three pitches for Joey Bonner to get this base hit. Let's take a look at it. Presented by Mazar, pitch by pitch. A sinker down and away, a fastball in, going up and in again, but inside out of that ball is Joey Votto. So Three crisp fastballs from Lance Lynn results in a leadoff base hit here in the seventh inning. Our Mazda pitch by pitch. Here's Brandon Phillips. He's twice grounded out. Once the second, once to short. Brandon in this series is three out of 11. And the Reds will enjoy an open day tomorrow and on Thursday. Surrounding the two game series against the American League's West Division leader, the Oakland Athletics. Oakland 18 games over themselves at 64 and 46 as they go into action today. Oakland is at home against the Texas Rangers, so that's a battle of the top two teams there. Split that two games so far. Oakland leads by three and a half at the start of the day. That game is a 4:05 Eastern Time start. Still 50 minutes from now. A little high and tight one right here for Brandon Phillips. They want it up. It looks like the ball just got away from Lance Lynn. No. Ball intent, although Lynn does have eight hit batters on the season. You're going to miss with an 0-2 pitch. Not really a bad spot to miss, from at least from the pitcher's perspective. Closing in on 90 pitches is at 88 right now. He works here in the seventh inning with the leadoff man Votto aboard. Never had a complete game in his big league career. Back 
his longest outing of this year. If he can get through this inning, he would tie that. Any number of times he has gone seven. The last time, two starts ago on the 25th of July against Philadelphia. Another strikes out on a breaking ball that bounces away from Tony Cruz. But with first base occupied and less than two out, he is retired. Remember to cheer on the Reds Tuesday and Wednesday. We've talked about it here at Great American Ballpark when Oakland comes calling. Arrive early on Tuesday, be one of the first 30,000 to take home a Joey Votto bobblehead presented by Formica. For tickets to see the Reds and the A's, you can call 513 381 Red. You can visit select Kroger locations or you can log on to Reds.com slash tickets. Here's Bruce. Ten strikeouts now for Lance Lynn. Double play with a little bit of a shift on, and that ends the bottom of the seventh. Materials, come on out and enjoy that. Wonder if they're going to be serving green beer at the ballpark that night. Wouldn't that be special? Well, that's maybe only St. Patrick's Day where they go to that extreme. Irish Heritage Night. I remember we were at Philadelphia earlier this year for Irish Heritage Night there. Yeah. They had Probably big, pretty big there. It was huge, and they had a terrific band sing our national anthem. You may remember that, or maybe not. I watched that game on TV. Really? Okay. Oh, that's right. You weren't there. <laughs> that was the cowboy, I guess, was there. That was him singing right along. Yeah, and me. I wasn't even in the shower. You do, did. Uh, the cowboy do a little Irish jig after that band play. He didn't, but he could. He's very capable. Uh -huh. Get a chicken leg in one hand and turkey leg in the other. <laughs> Big old platter of butter beans in front of him. Lance Lynn stays in there, bats for himself here in inning number eight. He is. Equaled his longest outing of the year at seven innings here this afternoon. Phillips will throw him out for the first out in the top of the eighth. So he's 0 for 4 as a hitter, but he certainly has his mind on going back out there in inning number eight. I'm a little interested and curious about Lynn still being in the ball game. To be honest with you, I know that. Neither of the bullpens are really all that strained right now, but Lance Lynn is a guy that in his career, I think he threw 170 some odd innings last year. He's at 135 this year. Still a young pitcher. You're wondering if maybe if you give him a few innings off here, he stays strong deeper into the season, maybe even in the postseason. But on the other hand, sometimes those pitchers to the manager will give you such a strong argument and say, hey, I'm fine. Have I lost anything in your eyes? The manager's got to reply no. I mean, you're throwing a three hit baseball game through seven. So he stays in there. With only 92 pitches. Yeah. His longest outing last year, he went eight against the Cubs at Wrigley Field on April the 25th. And he threw 110 pitches in eight innings in that game in a win. You got to remember that when, you know, when you go back 15, 20, even more years than that ago. And talk about pitching staffs where the starters go more innings and guys were at one time, you know, back in the 60s and even beyond earlier were, were throwing 300 innings a year instead of 200 innings a year. A lot of times teams that only carry, you know, nine pitchers on their staff, maybe even eight pitchers on their pitching staff if they had a four man rotation. Now every team has at least 12. So you've got guys down there that are being carried for. Just the reason of coming in and filling in some innings. Be a real perfect example. Speaking of the real walks Carpenter with one out here in the eighth.
Big crowd again here this afternoon. Thirty nine thousand six hundred eighteen. Means the Reds and the Cardinals in this three game series average over forty thousand for the three game get together. They draw one hundred twenty thousand three hundred eleven an average of forty thousand one oh three. Nicely done by Reds fans. There indeed. no doubt about it. I mean, they had a lot to crow about last night. Not a whole lot to cheer about here this afternoon. But what a great weekend for baseball. The weather cooperated perfectly. Nice to see all these seats filled. Be a lot of more Reds baseball this coming week. And yeah, we Let's mentioned see. the off day Monday and Thursday. Oakland in for two, and then the Padres for three. Reds owe both those teams, don't they? Mm -hmm. They certainly do. Oakland took two from the Reds out in Oakland in that two game series and the Padres took two out of three from the Reds at the tail end of the recent road trip. A little payback do those two teams. Tuesday's game against Oakland televised here in Fox Sports Ohio. No television Wednesday afternoon for the 1235 game. And then all three games against the Padres. You're on the home of the Reds. Got jammed on that pitch a little bit, but muscles it out into right field. Does John Jay? No two on with one out. Yeah, that breaking ball up a little bit even though he got it in on the handle when you get that ball up you don't have to do much of the elevation because the pitch is already up there he just gets it in the right field and Cardinals on the verge again they've got 13 hits they scored 13 runs the first night against the Reds that was a night a day after they scored 13 runs against the Pittsburgh Pirates so in three of the last four ball games for the Cardinals, a team that was having a heck of a hard time scoring runs there for a while, about a week ago. They've scored double digit runs in three of the last four. Now you knew it was going to come back for them. It's just a shame it had to come back this weekend. Now, what the Cardinals have really done well this year is come back after a loss. Of course, they lost last night. They are 31 and 14 after they lose. So. You know, you cut the losing streaks immediately that way. Base hit by Craig. Runner being sent home. And it is 11 to 2. Carpenter scores. That's the league leader in run scored. Matt Carpenter touching the plate for the 80th time this year. Well, Alan Craig continues his assault. On Paul Goldschmidt with a league lead and runs batted in. Goldschmidt started the day at 89. Craig adds one more here. He's at 85. Or two ahead of Brandon Phillips for second. Hadron Chambers, who took over in left field in the bottom of the seventh for Matt Holliday, bats for the first time. Well, still a lot of games left between these two ball clubs. The Reds will play seven more against the Cardinals. They'll play three in St. Louis towards the end of this month, the 26th, 7th, and 8th. And then the Reds will host the Cardinals again beginning of September for a four game series, Monday through Thursday, second through the fifth. So you have those seven, and then you have the six against the Pirates still remain. So 13 against the two teams directly ahead of them. So you really have a lot to say. I mean, this is a, a long way from being over, that's for certain. I think the Reds wanted to make a little better statement in this series than they have, but it's certainly not time to panic. 
It is time to get your act together. Cardinals at the end of a three city road trip and they looked at this particular road trip at the beginning of the year and realized it would be a tough one. Atlanta Pittsburgh and then Cincinnati and. As you said earlier swept in Atlanta. Losing four out of five in Pittsburgh they played five games there because one of those games was a makeup game for a previous rain out. But they're on the verge here of finishing their. Trip to Cincinnati by taking two out of three. Funny it would give them a three and eight record on the 11 game road trip but they'd go home feeling pretty good about the way things uh, turned out at the end. Chambers appeared in the game on Friday had a double in the seventh inning when one for two. Well, he showed he could really run. Yeah. He hit that ball just to the left of the center fielder Derek Robinson and. Just put the Jets on. Good pitch right there by Villarreal. Now Brock Peterson will bat for David Freeze. Looks like a little slider down and in. They're just going to try to crowd him with it, and that's exactly what it was at 89 miles an hour. And could have been a cutter. You know, a cutter and a slider react the same way. Depending on who throws it, sometimes the pitcher will throw a cut fastball and it has a big break to it. Other times it will have a very small little break to it. You just kind of hold that baseball off to the side and throw it more like a like a football. Here's the 29-year-old rookie, Brock Peterson. Pitch hits for. David Freeze, who went three for four with a couple of RBIs, including a home run his last time. Peterson appeared in the game yesterday as a pinch hitter and struck out. Had two to plate appearances on Friday, walked in one, singled in the other. Talked about yesterday, he made his big league debut on the 20th of July in St. Louis against San Diego. Guy who toiled for a long time in the minor leagues, but finally getting a shot with the Cardinals this year. He spent the last five years in AAA. Always put up double digit home run numbers. 23 this year down at Memphis. Have now taken a five-nothing lead over Colorado. Boy, on the negative side, Pirates hang on and win. Reds fail here. It would be a season worth six and a half games out. So yeah, what you said is true. Time to get it going in the other direction right now. He went around, says home plate umpire Dan Bellino. That ends the top of the eighth. Eleven to two, St. Louis in front. Fourteen to three, they about hit the Reds in this game. Lance Lynn back out there, looking for his longest outing of this year. As can get through the inning as long as since early last season. First pitch swinging is Frazier, and he flies out to center. So Todd 0 for three today, and now 0 for his last 28. Here's Zach Cozart. Zach brings us our Miller time moment of the game. I mentioned he has two career home runs against Lynn. One was July of 2011, his rookie year. And then today, a two run shot in the bottom of the second with Bruce aboard. At the time, it was a second level shot, made it a four to two game in favor of the Cardinals. Reds cut the deficit in half, but unfortunately, they've been unable to score anymore. Since that time. Well, 
A little bit of personal grudge right there between Cozart and Lance Lynn. After all, these are both Ole Miss Rebels going after each other. Joel Luckup tells us this is only the fourth time in the career of Lance Lynn, and this is his 54th start that he's worked into the eighth inning. going to be a base hit. Well, swinging bunt by Zach Cozart and result is second hit of the game. Let's go now to Los Angeles for another Fox Sports 1 game break. Pirate team just rolling along. Took four out of five from this Cardinal team. Well, it looks, and they're not there yet mathematically, but it sure looks like they're going to break that long spell of sub 500 seasons. Yeah, uh, they're beginning to score some runs, which was their problem earlier in the year. They continue to get good pitching. A.J. Burnett today shutting out the Rockies through the first six. Pass the mound to second. They get it out. Boy. You know you're going bad when that kind of thing happens. Devin Mezzarocco hit a bullet his first time up right by the the third baseman. It was snagged by the third baseman freeze. This time he goes right up the middle. And the second baseman comes over and he's going to try to barehand this ball. And Carpenter finally gets a handle on it. I mean just a second before. The runner's able to get in at a second base and he gets the out, so that's the fielder's choice. for Via Real, so the Reds will march one more pitcher out there in the ninth inning. Two innings worth of work, two runs given up by Via Real with three hits, walking a couple of strikeouts. Big hit yesterday for Hanahan. It was in the first inning. Bases loaded two out. He muscled one into center field just over the outstretched glove of the shortstop Pete Cosma. Offsetting that run the Cardinals scored in the first with two of their own in the bottom. Never headed after that. Red went on to win it eight to three. And hand comes in at 216 now with the 11 RBIs this year. Sam LeCure will be the Reds pitcher come the ninth inning. That's a five pitch walk to Hanahan. Two on with two out for Chu. Randy Choate is throwing in the St. Louis bullpen. He had that big out yesterday he recorded against Jay Bruce. Mike Matheny jogging out of the dugout on the third base side, the manager of the Cardinals. Well, Matheny might ask Lance Lynn what he wants to do right here, and Lance Lynn probably, like 99% of the pitchers out there, will tell him, I feel fine. I want to get out of the inning. But again, you got to wonder what was really the advantage uh, for the Cardinals to leave Lance in, Lynn in here. It's not like you've got an overworked bullpen, although they have had a lot of games in the last week. Probably will not come out to pitch the ninth inning. He's got 105 pitches coming up. Not that that's a tremendous amount, but remember, Lynn has never pitched 
a 200 inning season and they're going to be asking him to do that later in the year as they go down the stretch. So it's two or two on two out. He's handled two twice a couple or three times a couple of strikeouts and a lazy fly ball to center. Scoots between the legs of Cruz and goes back to the backstop. Runners move up. Looked like a cross up right there that Cruz didn't know what to expect. He wasn't sure whether that ball was going to stay straight, whether it was going to sink. What the heck was going on right there? Watch how he attempts to, to catch this. That was at the very end of it. Actually, he had his, his fingers down at first and then he put his fingers up. Probably a cross up on the pitch selection. That means a hit here by Chu could add two to his RBI total. He moved out of the way of that. And Bellino said strike. Almost hitting. She's been hit, of course, 22 times this year. Now a full count. One more will equal the second, which was his biggest pitch count inning of the game. Nowhere near a season high pitch count, which was. 124 against the Mets back in May. He's at 109 now. And ball four. Loads the bases with two out. We'll bring Paul to the plate with a lefty choke throwing in the bullpen. No move by Mike Matheny. No well, he's struggling in this inning. This is the first inning in which he's walked two batters. He's kind of nibbled around the strike zone. Looks like he's lost a little bit on his fastball. And this is one of those kind of hanger on innings right here. And if Paul can connect with one, it might make this a little bit more interesting. Paul, of course, does have a grand slam. One of the two that the Reds have hit this year. His came as a pinch hitter against the Nationals. Well, pretty good pitch there. Looking first pitch fastball gets first first pitch changeup. Mata waits on deck. Then Phillips. Phillips has the other grand slam this year. Ball quickly down two strikes. X man in this game is 0 for 3. Best ball he hit was that liner right back to Lynn in the first inning. Dominance of Lance Lynn today, so much so that the Reds have not left a base runner on 
in this entire game. Gone down an order five times. Another three batter inning thanks to a double play, but now they have them loaded. Goes over at third, Hanahan out at second. Chu leads away at first. Paul, a strikeout victim, number 11 of the game for Lance Lynn. Cardinal first baseman Matt Adams that came in the first inning. Put the finishing touches on a four run frame. Second time in three days. The Cardinals scored four times in the first. For Adams, it was his eighth home run of the year. Our Nissan drive of the game. Pedro Villarreal goes two innings, allows two runs, three hits. And now Sam LeCure will work the ninth. Matt Adams leads it off. Well, five pitchers for Dusty Baker yesterday, and the game started by Tony Singrati. Same for today. When Sam McKeer takes the bat, he will beat pitcher number five. Mike Leak went five. Logan Andrusik did not retire a batter in his outing. Ended up giving up three hits, a couple of runs. Alfredo Simon came to the rescue to get all three outs in that inning. Pedro Villarreal, a couple of innings, and now Sam McCure. Play by Brandon mm -hmm. Phillips. Remind me a little bit of Wilson Pickett on that play. A little pick and a casual spin right there by BP. Anybody can do the spin and the throw to first. It's picking that hot shot down to your left is a tough part. Well, as this Cardinal weekend comes to a close here at Great American Ballpark, we certainly hope you've enjoyed the the pictures and the sounds that you have heard. Today's game being produced by Brian Hunterman, directed by Roy Alfers. Reds live, pre and post, produced by our good friend Kent Dream Weaver. Associate producers. Matt Sigafoos, yes, the same Matt Figus, uh, Sigafoos who dials up the highlights most games. Alan Layton, also an associate producer with the graphics. Coordinating, uh, coordinating producer of Reds Baseball is Bob Pennell. Executive producer, Fox Sports Ohio, is Tom Farmer. Our wonderful statistician up here in the booth, as always, Joel Luckham. And lest we forget Jim Strickland to our right on camera. And we'll all be back at it. Come Tuesday night when the Oakland Athletics are here. Tony Cruz is one for three with a walk. In the left field, over the head of Paul and over the wall. First home run of the year for Tony Cruz. And it's a 10 run lead. The third home run of the game for St. Louis. That is only the second career home run, Tony Cruz. 
Now Sam McCure knows it as soon as it hits the bat. You can kind of see his reaction. He'll cut fastball or slider trying to go away from him and just got it up a little bit. Been that kind of a day. Really been that kind of series for the Cardinal offense. Who's hit a home run last year against Miami and he gets one here today against the Red Legs and Sam LeCure. Johnson the other catcher on this Cardinal team is in the on deck area so he will bat for Lynn Descalzo trying to find the alley Chu on the run he can't get it goes to the wall there goes Descalzo to second he is held up there with a double his second double of this game. Well, even an inning in which you just hope to go out there and get him now one, two, three. Try to keep it as tidy as you can. Gets out of hand sometimes. A home run by Cruz, a double by Descalzo. Been a long day in the field for the Reds. You know that stat they have in football? The time of possession stat. Yes. You know, in a way, you can adapt that to baseball. Mm -hmm. This time of standing in the field while the other team hits around. 16 hits for the Cardinals, four hits for the Reds. There's your time of possession. Rob Johnson started yesterday behind the plate, went over three. The Yadier Molina injury, he had spent most of this year, if not all of this year, down at Triple A Memphis. A run in on the home run by Tony Cruz, a double by Descalzo means 16 hits now by the Cardinals. A day to forget from a baseball perspective for Dusty Baker's crew today. Silver lining today for the Reds in the seventh inning in Boston, the Red Sox. Lead 4 0 over the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Reds started the day four games in the loss column ahead of Arizona for the final wild card spot in the National League. Well, you know, for most of the season, all we were talking about are the teams that are right there with you or the teams that are ahead of you if you're a Reds fan. Mm -hmm. we're talking about the Pirates, talking about the Cardinals. Hit hard by Johnson to left. Over the head of the left fielder out there, Paul. Run is going to score. 13 to 2. Fourth time for the Cardinals in the last five games that they've scored 13. That seems like every curveball thrown by a Reds pitcher today has been a hanger. But then back to my point about the teams that you're talking about, watching the scoreboard. Now all of a sudden, Reds fans are. And you are Jim Couch watching the team behind the Reds. Mm -hmm. I mean for the longest time the Reds were so s secure in a playoff spot even though it would be a wild card spot which gives you a one game play in. Opportunity to get into the postseason. 
But now you're talking about following what the Arizona Diamondbacks are doing. This is what the wild card shapes up right now. So essentially the Cardinals are. What eight and a half games. Secured into that spot. Base hit in the right field by Carpenter. Four straight hits against offerings of Sam LeCure. Boy. You know, this is the kind of outing that can undo statistically a no. month's worth of great work for Sam LeCure. No I mean, question. the guy has been absolutely consistently right there every time the Reds have needed him. And now you come out in a mop up situation like this. You give up a big number in an inning, and now your earned run average blows up, your hits per inning blow up, uh, and all of a sudden it looks like you've had a mediocre year when you really have had a tremendous year. Well, you, you talked about it last night when. Our oldest Chapman came into the game with an 8 3 lead in a non safe situation. Oftentimes we've seen him give up hits and walks in those kind of situations because the adrenaline is not there like it would be in a safe situation. And I'd imagine it's the same thing for Sam today. Yeah, it is. But the, the difference, I think, between a closer is the fact that you can easily identify statistically a close situation, a safe situation, for instance, uh, when it's a little dip more difficult to do that for. Uh, you know, for a middle reliever, but you're exactly right. I mean, you 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 like, you're, you're trying to get your work in, but meanwhile, these guys are on a roll, and it's a kind of ball game, quite frankly. That when you hear the rev, the bell ring down there for that bullpen phone, you don't want it to be. You, you ask Porky Lopez, say, hey, just please don't answer that. I'm not here. Oh my. Another one that's going to find green grass is going to roll to the wall. Johnson scores. Carpenter coming home to roost. He will score. Then a four run inning. It is 15 to 2. This is the most runs the Reds have given up in a game this year. And doubles are wild this afternoon, and maybe even really in this series. John Jay gets his third hit. He gets on base for the fourth time. And the Cardinals have absolutely just steamrolled the Reds. 19 hits. This is now the most runs that the Cardinals have scored in a game this year. They had scored 14 in the first weekend of the season against San Francisco. Now they have produced 15 in this game. Pete Cosmo batting for the first time. Homer by Cruz. This is all after Matt Adams grounded out. Homer by Cruz. Double by Descalzo, double by the pinch hitter Johnson, single by Carpenter, two run double by John Jay. A four spot, a five spot, and a four spot in three different innings in this game for St. Louis. Cosmo takes a call third strike. Team man. It's only the sixth strikeout. Fans don't even have a free pizza to root on here in the ninth. Cardinals will have a new pitcher working against the Reds in the bottom of the ninth. This is Adron Chambers batting for the second time. He struck out in the eighth. That was against Pedro Villarreal. And he's down two strikes very quickly here.
How about that? Averaging 11 runs a game over the last four games, St. Louis. You can win a lot of games that way. You can pad a lot of batting averages too. Strikeout ends the inning. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Reds upcoming. Well, Lance Lynn went eight innings, allows two runs, four hits for St. Louis. Struck out a season high 11, one shy of equaling his career best of 12. And the hard throwing Trevor Rosenthal comes into the game. Lotto do up. Derek Robinson bats for him. Robinson at 259 with seven RBIs this year. Six for 21 as a pinch hitter. Corky Miller is on deck to bat for Phillips. To the second baseman Carpenter. One out. Now Corky Miller bats for Brandon Phillips. Smashed by Corky Miller. And there are two up. Or can anything get any better for the Cardinals right now? If it can, I can't think of it. I mean, it's a nice play, no doubt, by Matt Adams. He goes down there and just scoops up a very tough ground ball. And The first time you see it, you think it's luck. The more you see that, you realize that's a pretty good bit of glove work right mm -hmm. there. Backhand over third by Cruz, and his throw to first is in time. Reds go down in order in the bottom of the ninth. And this beatdown by St. Louis comes to an end as they hammer the Reds this afternoon. 15 to 2. The final score in the process. The Cardinals take two out of three in the series. And so indeed, this team will need to regroup for the Oakland series. Well, but at least they're getting a day off tomorrow, and maybe that'll give them a little bit of a breather and maybe some time to check the mirror out and find out which one of them needs to take control of this ball club and come back out. With a little bit more vigor when it comes to Tuesday and the Oakland A's coming to town. Lance Lynn gets his 13th win. Mike Leak falls to 10 and 5. We'll come back with Reds Live post game presented by Kings Honda next.